Hi, this is your host Q, live and direct from Psyche Studio, Kochi. Hope you all are having a good time. Welcome to the ground breaking where we sit down with creatives, design and business pioneers to discuss their journeys, process and approach. If you're listening to this podcast for the first time, consider subscribing. Also check out our website. We are working on a newsletter and a slowly growing design community on Discord where we have weekly design live session every Saturday where we learn something new. For this episode, we have the pleasure of welcoming Tasha Solinska, a design visionary and design director at Dixon Buxi. Tasha's passion for book cover design has paved her creative path and she has worked on projects that resonate with audiences far and wide. In our conversation, we explore Tasha's fascinating journey in design and her experiences working on projects that captivate the masses. From her early beginnings to her current role as a design director, Tasha brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to the table. We also dive into her unique perspective on creative leadership, uncovering the principles that guide her in leading and inspiring teams of high-level creatives. Tune in as we talk about her creative leadership journey. Journey, 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 journey. ये है ग्राउंड बेकन Hey Tasha, how's it going with you? I'm good, Q. How are you doing? Doing, doing great. Uh, having uh, had a busy day. Uh, it's um, Friday Eve Friday. out here. Yeah, how's it going with you? Where are you? What's the time like? Um, I am in the studio. I'm in London um, at Dixon Baxi HQ. We are yeah, like just getting into summer. So second of June, it's lovely and sunny outside. And yeah, Friday. So. I'm actually in the studio today just doing a few bits but it's not a day where everyone's in so it's kind of nice and quiet so I thought I'll come and show off the bookshelves to you. <laughs> yeah, is is it like the best time of the year for you? I think so. Um I mean I suppose cuz the winter is quite long. <laughs> it's quite yeah. nice to come in the spring and the summer. Um yeah, it's a nice time of year. Everyone smiles in the sunshine. Yeah I I think it's been it's been almost a couple of months that we had that chat uh, you know a catch up call uh, and uh, you've been busy since then so first yeah. of all thanks for hopping on to the podcast and uh, yeah I'm I'm already excited to to you know about the things we're going to talk about so so yeah uh, uh, tell us something about what you've been doing Tasha I mean uh, you know what's what what, uh, what do you do at Dixon Bakshi how do you pronounce it is it like dixon baxi dixon dixon baxi yeah, yeah. dixon baxi simon dixon and apurva baxi um obviously they're the founders um and we're 21 years now uh they've been running the studio for 21 years so um really i mean i've always been like a massive fan from when i graduated and seen all the work out there um it took me about 10 years to get get through the door. Um, you know, I worked in various studios across London. Um, but yeah, I always was a huge fan. So I actually got um, the role during lockdown when when COVID and everything was happening. And um, it was just, yeah, epic to come, come in and work with the team, really. They're inspiring bunch of people. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a really important job. Uh, I mean, you, so, I mean, let, let's take a deep dive in your, uh, you know, in uh, a little early in your career. I mean, you always wanted to be a designer? Um, I don't know if I really knew what, like, being a graphic designer was. I, I knew that I, I was drawn to art and literature. So those were my top subjects along with music, I guess. So they were the only ones I felt at home in. Um, and I think I wanted to be a painter at one point, you know, don't know what graphic design was and someone actually steered me in that direction. Um, so I went to Bath School of Art, which was a, an amazing course, very kind of, uh, I'd say quite craft-based and conceptual. Our tutors were awesome. Um, one of the tutors was uh, Matt Robertson, who did the Factory Records book. I don't know if you know much about Factory Records, but obviously the art, uh, the art behind that uh, um, with Peter Savile, and he's the graphic designer that made a lot of it. Um, so there was a little bit of influence from that, and uh, yeah, so that was that was sort of early on, I guess. And then I got quite into the, we had we had a book design teacher and um, letterpress, 
And so I got quite into the more physical sides of design and love the use of language and um, was quite obsessed with book design. And I kind of ended up working in my first role was at Fitch, which, um, you know, you guys have a, a Fitch HQ in, in India. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I worked there for the first sort of three and a half years and then did a bit of traveling. Um, oh, in, in, in India? You no, were, I, well, I have okay. been to India actually. Yeah. I've been just for a trip. Uh, yeah. Um, amazing food. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what's, uh, which cities, uh, which all cities you, you traveled? I went to Mumbai and then uh, stayed there for a bit and then got the bus to Goa, um, which was cool. And then I went into yeah. Ham- Hampi as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah it's, a, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's really, really nice. And awesome. yeah, beautiful colors everywhere. Different to grey London. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's uh, great. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you so you got a chance to uh, you know dip your uh, to toes into a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, physical stuff like books and book covers and all, which which you don't uh, you know get to see a lot uh, lately. I I think, but 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 but, but I think on uh, I, I, lately I've been seeing a lot of uh, uh, you know creators on on Instagram doing doing that thing, and they are actually making uh, you know making a difference. So do, do you think when you when you started uh, you know when you when you're growing in your career and everything was becoming di- digital this approach of uh, you know printing things uh, kind of helped you in a way or do, do yeah. or yeah I was thinking about that earlier just the tactility is something yeah different and connected to me with the kind of printed page and the way that textures come together it's more about the physical like the object I did. I ended up um, doing a MA at Reading in book design, focused on that, which was you know learning all about the printing history. Like we had some some great tutors there that were sort of like um, professional book designers, and John Morgan, who's like you know he he does some absolutely beautiful work, and um, that was probably that was like my dream, I think, to do book design, and I think that. That it's probably the best. It's probably like the sum of um, all, all sort of the best bits of graphic design for me. Because you've got like obviously the the physicality, the typography, the narrative, and the and the sort of imagery. The the combination of all of those kind of like filmic, filmic page. You know. Yeah. 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 I I can see that you 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 got a book design master degree from University of Reading. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, it's it's Reading is the place. Um, which oh, is quite oh, all right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 No, but it's yeah. like it, it's quite funny because obviously design for reading, is located in Reading, so it, uh, they they're spelt the same. Um. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Made me sound so dumb. No. <laughs> oh no. Um. That was that was um. Yeah, my, it's this guy called Sir Michael Twyman, actually. He started that course, um, probably been running for, I don't know, 30 years or something. He went to the art school there and realized there wasn't any education for typography um, t- and printing history at all uh, in the UK, that sort of focused. So he, he created the school um, and it was in, it was, it's in a crazy kind of like old, a hospital it's like a really random location but uh it's shared the the ma there is um shared with um the type designers who are are learning how to create um you know uh fonts from you know latin and non-latin scripts so you're sharing that with the information designers and it was quite a nice place to be because we're all kind of yeah learning all this like really important history that I guess doesn't really get, doesn't always get taught because everyone in yeah. design would be future facing. Um, yeah. yeah. So I loved it. It was quite, uh, you know, intense and lots of people told me not to do it because it wasn't like, you know, book design is dead and people say all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that definitely sounds very specific, uh, also, right. I mean, book, uh, you know, uh, uh, studying design, uh, you know, and, and again, uh, uh, specializing into book design. So I mean, uh, so was it like your passion towards uh, designing for bo- for books? Was 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 the reason that you you chose this? Well, I was doing like quite a lot of um, maybe a bit more commercial work than I wanted to, more corporate um, stuff in in studios, and I and I was 
I just felt like drawn towards something a bit more physical. Um, so I, I did that. And although I didn't become a book designer, I think that I used the, the craft that I uh, gained and the knowledge like in everything I do, just whether it's kind of just details in typography or um, the way that we do kind of storytelling. Um, you know, sometimes we'll make a, a zine, like a mock-up scene yeah. instead of um just printing things out kind of makes you approach it in a in a slightly different way so so yeah i'm I'm glad i did it um and yeah there's always a few more books to design but yeah. they do take a lot of time <laughs> so uh so uh, i mean uh, uh so i mean you you've you spent some time in uh you know uh working around design before you hopped on to you know learning about this right if i can yeah, I can, yeah. yeah. yeah sort of dotting around a bit i guess i graduated I worked at Fitch for a few years, did a bit of traveling, um, and then came back into London. I worked for a company called Imagination. Um, and then I was actually freelance for probably about six years or so. Um, did my MA and then I was freelance and, yeah. um, which is cool because, you know, you get to see a lot of different studios and I never really felt like I'd find somewhere that I wanted to base myself, you know? Um, so yeah, sort of fast forward, I guess, like, yeah. So, so but, tell us, tell us about your, your time you were independent for six years, six years is a long time, you know, and, yeah. uh, tell, tell us about, you know, why did you choose that path and what made you, you know, uh, continue your path at Dixon Buxy? I think, um, at the time it was a little bit more freedom, you know, creative freedom to choose, um, where you wanted to be and and to also get a little bit more experience there's a there's pros and cons you know in that you can do um work that you want to a bit more but then you don't have you're not as included i suppose in the studios and and you know you don't get deep into the culture of studios so that was definitely missing i think and it took me a bit of time to figure out where i wanted to be and and the type of work that i wanted to do as well um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot, such a like broad, <laughs> broad range of studios in, in London and, you know, it doesn't fit everyone, the pace and the culture, it's hard to get it right. Yeah, uh, yeah, for, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a lonely ride. I mean, I've, I've been into freelancing myself and, but I only could do it for two years. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but but yeah definitely uh, uh so so what what made you you know uh, go choose this path and uh, you know because again i'm i'm definitely in love with the kind of work you guys are doing uh and um, and and then you again uh, so, so so tell us about the transition and you know uh, the, the kind of projects you were doing and on how do you find out that okay it's a good fit for you well i think um it's just the, the she, you know, the quality of the work here. And you know that I think by the output, I could sense that the, 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 the sort of thought that goes into every aspect, whether it's the language or the way things move or the way that things are presented and the storytelling sort of like, that's the power I think of what kind of Dixon Baxi has and you know, from a writer to um, strategist to designer, um, editor, there's, you can sense it in the work that there's like a, a craft and a quality and um, yeah, and you want to learn from, from the best, don't you? So um, yeah, it's one of those places that's quite daunting to be in, you know, when you first arrive because so many talented people, um, but everyone's awesome and, you know, very supportive. It's a fast-paced world that we live in, but everyone's got so much talent, um, and there's lots of yeah. I've been learning a lot. Um, I think I started off as senior. I was here for a couple, like maybe a year and a half as a senior designer, and then more recently as design director. So that's obviously changed my um, approach as well. And I'm learning a lot and managing like the vision a lot more and comes with different different challenges um but yeah so it's kind of been a it's been a great journey so far it's um yeah it's a mad amazing place to work <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean as a as a design director uh you know i mean 
considering that you already have a team of highly creative people so how do you manage that because again it's not like that you know you have to tell them about the deliverables or you know or or how they should work so how how do you you know manage a hi- already you know a, a highly creative team just just curious about that i mean it's just it's constantly evolving um sort of the way that we like to approach things is that everyone is everyone's like a creative everyone's input is is equally valid so we um we kind of fuel each other um and it's not although i might be kind of leading in in one aspect um and that would be like sort of setting the vision and making sure that people feel empowered to to follow their own sort of like creativity obviously within whatever our framework of strategy is but i think being able to empower um everyone individually to follow their own creativity what they think is right then that sort of like shows in the work you're sort of like creative spirit you know um which sounds a bit cheesy but <laughs> it does it does um there is an energy about that you know if you're figuring something out and you you're doing something you really believe in um so so there's a bit of that and and then yeah just like the vision is something that you need to kind of like set i guess and continue to um develop and and and, and almost like yeah and, and yeah. I, yeah so and and what do you, what do you, so I, i'm sure where you're sitting you also have a you know a, a lot of responsibility to uh you know build an effective team you know building that space you know building that space where innovation and creativity can also thrive so how do you constantly you know remind yourself or maybe the kind of things you follow to make sure that you know it works like that 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 you in the end you uh, whatever work you create you should have like an effective team yeah i think um the everyone who's sort of like in this building has like a really strong skill set and a strong opinion and they're they're all smart people so it's not necessarily me setting it you know like it's about being able to to create a space that is nurturing and you know it's my input as well as as everyone else is in the team so you know what we do is we share we share a lot we share a lot of work all the time we create a lot um so we've got you know huge bodies of work to then edit into and you know find that little thread of magic and um it depends what stage you're at in the project of course like at at this point where i am in my project it's a uh, we're right at the end of a probably like an an eight eight month or seven month project so you know t- this is like the peak <laughs> of of um delivery um and that's a different you need different kind of muscles to to make that happen than in the than the initial phases which is more kind of the ignite kind of inspire um stage where you're creating and generating ideas yeah w- would like to would like to know uh, uh, more about the kind of i mean of course i mean whatever you are allowed to say cuz 8 months is a long time for a design project or or or, or do you think you work on such long projects all the time uh not always i mean they obviously have there's different stages um of that that period of time you know from the kind of strategy um through to that translation we work with strategists to um you know evolve what the the kind of creative principles would be for the brand and um there's a there's a long phase of of kind of um creative exploration um which which is probably the, it's probably the most exciting part um you know that bit where you're trying to figure things out can be the scariest bit um and then we'll once that vision is set like we'll we'll make it happen so so for for the project I'm doing because it's quite vast um there's lots of different aspects to that um so yeah not all of them are that long um and it, yeah you have to kind of find a way of um of still being inspired by by the work you know because obviously sometimes you get a little bit tired and you have to kind of take a step back and realize what you're doing or try yeah. and reconnect with the work um and the team and everything cuz um yeah i think you know you know yourself it can be it can be a tough 
uh, being a designer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. And and uh, I mean, uh, I mean that happens to all of us, right? I mean, you uh, you know you you have to work uh, towards a single brief, and uh, you know you after a point you are like you kind of you feel like you that you are kind of stuck and you are not doing what you really want to do. So it's like I I call it you know uh, balancing unsexy work with sexy work. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, what, what, how how do you do that, or or do you your I mean, do you do you have some kind of activities in your team that you const which constantly you know fuels your creativity? Because because I because I've been you know talking about it with with a couple of people that you know they they always mention about it because there's a reason that you you become a designer right. Yeah, but, yeah. but so so you have to in order to be consistently creative uh, uh you know you do one or the other things so i'm just just want to know how you guys are uh, tackling that i think you just have to like uh be able to take energy and give energy to the team as well like it's not you're not just creating everything on your own i think you need to lean on your colleagues your peers if if you haven't found that energy you know you might have an off week or an off day and um talking to someone can help work that out and you know they might then see it from a different angle and i think you need to be able to support your your colleagues and and they'll support you um cuz you know it's not it's not easy all the time and and then you kind of get that energy back and you might be able to support them the next time so i think being open is probably the best thing you can do with if you are if you are struggling with it because often it just takes a little bit of a a conversation to to turn your perception around yeah and and how how much do you think so uh, so i've been uh, uh, you know right now i'm in that position where i'm running a team of uh, 10 12 people and lately i've been seeing that i mean i've i've read it some uh, somewhere but i've been seeing that uh you know uh, the, the the kind of work the kind of culture the kind of uh, you know relationship you have amongst the team is directly proportional to the work you're creating directly proportional to your output uh, do do you think it makes sense yeah definitely i think what i find is that if you believe in the work and your if it comes from you that you don't think about what it should look like you sort of like has to come from what you believe and it sounds like a little bit maybe contrived but it doesn't happen all the time for me like you know confidence can waver and that shows in my work when I'm when I'm not feeling confident um and when I am when I'm confident in my ideas my creative kind of ideas then it then it shows so I know that about myself so I believe that giving other people confidence is the way to to let them that sh- shine in their work so that's that's probably a different thing isn't it you know you're not just managing what the work should look like but empowering the team to have confidence in their idea and to pursue something that they might not have thought of before or try something different think outside the box like it's um i think ex- experimentation is probably the scariest and most fun bit of the job you know trying a new program or um switching it around switching I was talking to Sai and AB about this um they they have like a quite healthy healthy competition I'd say between them and I think that's why they're so you know they've they've their partnership their creative partnership has endured um because they challenge each other and they kind of push one another and they switch files <laughs> shouldn't tell you that actually <laughs> sure they've said it on a podcast before but um yeah like you know being able to to contribute to someone else's work as well yeah. you because i think designers can be a little bit there's they can be quite self critical and maybe get a bit like in their heads um comparing yourself to someone else or something like that and if you can start to see and fuel someone else's work then they might see something in yours it's not always you that spots the quality in your work you know yeah 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 for sure for sure uh, and see i mean you are so right now you're working about, uh, you know uh, so we work around different types of creative people creative start as you know strategists designers and everyone i i think as a creative leader you have to 
you know see their super power and you know make the make the most out of of the of their skill set but the, but but a lot of people don't talk you know especially people who are uh, you know uh, creative leaders like 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 you uh, how how do you ensure that everyone is working you know towards the same goal uh, and collaborating you know effectively so how do you you know your constant because uh, uh, again again i'm i'm sure a lot of times the sensitivity of the projects is 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 is, is immaculate so uh, h- how do you ensure the, the, you know that that bit so do you mean how how do you ensure the that we're collaborating yep yep and also working on a same goal considering that it can be you know uh, become overwhelming yeah. i think that that actually i'm also sharing up this as yeah, a yeah. as a problem i face yeah. Well, I think because um, it's so vast sometimes what we're creating, you get a bit lost in the weeds and you, you might get maybe you, maybe a little overwhelmed by the scale of what you're doing or once you start creating, you might have the vision and then once you start making, you feel that you're losing it. So there's you can go back to the core, or like go back to the original work, um, but also keep, I think you need to keep track of of that little magic, that kind of like, essence whether it's three images or or kind of like a, a um you know a set of it could be like the magic kind of deck that you've you've got on the side that you're that you're constantly referring back to because sometimes like the the the, the amazing thing i've found is that when you're in the initial stages of of you know ideation and really loose and able to be free that's often where the the best Work, like the best ideas come from a bit more raw, not overthinking. Um, so going back to those early ideas and reminding yourself, oh yeah, actually, that was cool. I forgot about that. Um, it's all there because you've done all the thinking, but you might have just got caught up in the details of, I don't know, formats or um, output. And yeah, it's all there. I think you just have to trust that it it, it it kind of you need to resurface it and then bring the magic to the top so so and i mean do, do you think that in this whole process documenting is something which is which is important for you or uh, or or and and how much uh, you you guys take a step back so so let me let me just ask you that so for, uh, i mean whenever you have like a scope of work of maybe 3 months 4 months uh, do you, i mean uh, how often does it does it happen that you guys you you take a step back and you know uh, start afresh not not start afresh but like you know take a step back and maybe uh, you know do more iterations how often does it happen and how do you think it, it if it's a good approach or not it does happen actually starting again <laughs> oh <laughs> which like, that's quite scary that's happened um a couple of times like don't not don't be afraid to start again if you don't think it's working um and then you know you've got everything out haven't you you've got all the the initial first ideas out and maybe maybe the next round is actually you know un- un- unsurfacing something a bit more original um but more to your first point it's like uh if you feel like the work is not hitting it it's not there then go back and and remind yourself um take yeah taking a time out is like the it's the hardest thing to do i think when you're trying to figure something out um because you know you've got deadlines and things but if you can just say like this isn't working today (laughs) um we don't all have the luxury of that so but yeah if even the small breaks kind of revisiting going back um switching it up a little bit can help um yeah i don't know i'm quite intrigued to see what what your project is now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I mean, I, I'd love to uh, uh, talk about it. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, and again, when you say that, uh, you know, starting afresh, uh, I'm expecting a lot of support from your client as well. Right. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm yeah. sure that can be really hard, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it dep- I suppose it depends which phase you're in um, of the project um, and what you've, what you've agreed and things like that. Um, but it's, it's never you're never going to do that make that decision lightly are you it's quite a, it's quite a big decision to make and quite a brave one to be able to say okay well maybe this isn't working but that's quite i mean i guess it's quite extreme but we've we have done it um and it it worked out for the better um but yeah it was a bit risky <laughs> you know because obviously time 
Um, but sometimes you are kind of coming at something, you're coming at the problem from a dip, from the an angle that is clouding your view. So, sort of new set of paper, blank sheet can. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has happened with me where uh, you know I was uh, I tried my best to you know take a step back to to you know come up with something better, but uh, I didn't get that support from the client. So, so yeah, that's that's I think the other side. Uh, you know, yeah. of uh, uh, yeah, uh, other side of the game. Uh, so I mean, as as a, as a design director, uh, uh, so I, I, you know, I've I've already mentioned that. You know, you've already mentioned that. Uh, you know, the the kind of people you have. It's 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 a diverse. You know, it's it's a very uh, diverse team. You 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 have. So when you're you know when you uh, when you're working uh, towards a, a single goal, how do you how do you select uh, a proposal, for example? Or how do you realize? Okay, oh, this is working. So it. it I mean, this is this something which is very individualistic approach. You you do, do follow, or you, you, you like your whole, whole team sits and decide. Okay, what's the best? Because yeah. that's also a, a, you know it's it's a, a, what I I find very difficult to do. Because a lot of times you know it's just and 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 again, again taking that call. Okay, we have to move forward with th this. You know, we're drawing that line. Hmm. Um. I think it's got to be me like coming from the team and uh obviously the kind of the final decision would be between me and the creative director or who is ever whoever is at that level um but it doesn't really it kind of it, we all work together very um in a way that it's like you know a lot of contributions coming from from the whole team and i think you know um what's working and what's not so those decisions are like made out of discussions and uh, we have this thing called uh, campfire. So we, we all come around and we're kind of discussing the work and we might, you know, analyze that, um, strip stuff down and then boil it down and remix it. Um, that That's sort of the way that we would like to work in a very collaborative way. And that's also where you get the kind of most, for me, the most original because it's called, you know, the contribution from lots of different mindsets and lots of different eyes um, that can, you know, get to the little sweet spot that you wouldn't be able to necessarily decide on your own. Um, so we're definitely more team focused in that sense to make those kind of decisions. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. It's it's a, it's always, a, I mean, in my case, it's, it's I mean, I, I definitely agree with what you said. Uh, in my case, I always have difficulty to, you know, uh, uh, go, go with that because because I I also think about the other side uh, of the game, which is you know convincing the the client of what we 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 are trying to trying to do. So yeah, that that's that's a that's a difficult part. I I have been lately you know uh, f finding out. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's 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 definitely fun, but yeah, well we have a lot of de like this. There's not one perfect way to do it, and we have a lot of discussions about what the right way to do that exact thing is like. Do we do one route that we really like the answer to the problem that everyone is behind or do you kind of do do you go wide and uh, you know there's always different opinions and it depends on the problem i guess but um it's all about being able to tell the story i think if you're telling the story and you're creating a um an answer to a problem in a really clear way then that and you're answering it step by step then I think you're doing the job. You know, it's not just about creating something that visually looks great. It has to respond to the challenge. And um, yeah, that's where everyone's minds come in, isn't it? Um, you can't do it completely on your own. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, as, a, as an agency, I'm sure you get like all types of projects. So, uh, uh, I mean, only if you are allowed to answer, uh, you know, answer this this question. Do you have like a set of processes for for uh, you know uh, for d a different uh, different briefs? So, for example, if you have a, a, a brand building project, or you have a you know a decided uh, uh, a process that you want to follow, or every time you have some a brief and you try to design the process as well, or you 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 kind of stick to your process. Uh, I'm, I'm just yeah. curious about that. Yeah, we have like a, a the kind of the the process is set but flexible. You know, 
we have a process that we will um, work to from the kind of initiate phase um, to the insights, you know, gathering insight and then, you know, then we're in Inspire where we were like actually creating. Um, so the process is there, but obviously it depends if it's like a pure brand, um, pure kind of brand creation um, depends on the sector it's in and what the format, you know, is. Um, I've done I do, I've done quite a bit of streaming um, or more digital kind of broadcast brands um, since I've been here, which is cool because you get um, you get to mix uh, everything from sound design to film and motion and and typography and graphics and all of that. So that's quite like yeah, I guess there's there is an approach to it, but every project is a bit different, so they'll have a, a different set of challenges. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Uh, so I, 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 I was checking out the website and this, and I, I, and I saw that you guys have a, a, a TV series of your own. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, tell, tell, yeah. tell me about that. I mean, I, I still have to watch the whole thing, and it, it is definitely very intriguing. What are you trying to do with that? Yeah, that's actually um, it's the Dixon Baxi Way season two. They did uh, first one couple of years back now with Psy and AB which is more it, the intention is to kind of lift the veil a little bit on the creative process and agency life and be more open source so students and people coming into the industry can understand um, and learn I guess about creative challenges and, and what, what actually goes on behind the studio doors because I think that historically it's all been a little bit kind of closed and um there's this element of studios kind of having their own secret recipe or but i think sign ab wanted to be a lot more open sourced um so that was the initial one from the dby season one and then last summer we did dby season two and it was just kind of a bit more um about the team and answering those yeah gnarly quick creative questions um, and they're in bite-size format as well, so they're kind of like a few, sort of six minutes, I think, five or six minutes, little bite-size um, mini podcasts, and they're on the website, and it's quite easy for students to access, and there are a lot of questions on there that are, are really helpful, I think, and um, the whole kind of range of the team that were on there as well is quite a broad, broad amount of opinions, so... I think it's great. I'd, I w would have loved something like that when I was just coming into the industry. It can be quite daunting, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, right now there's so much stuff out there. You know, I mean, as as a student, uh, I think when I was a student, uh, uh, it sounds like uh, you know I, I'm too old, but like I was a student in 2012, 13. There was a lot of stuff there as well. Uh, then, then as well, it's been almost a decade. So, uh, so yeah. But right now, it's like I mean, you know, nothing can stop you. You know, if you want to learn something, there are plethora of stuff to you know uh, dip your toes into. Uh, you, you, you. Uh, in, in our in our last call, you mentioned about the book club uh, in in the studio. Tell me about that. I mean, that, that is that the favorite part uh, of of your job? Um, was it my book club or the studio book club? I I, I can't clearly remember about that. Or uh, and you definitely mentioned about the the, the book yeah. club. Well, um. It's basically, if you see the walls here, you know, the, the, this is like the breadth of, <laughs> we have so many design books in here and it's so cool to be around because, um, you know, Simon and AB will just buy a new book every, there's, a, there's always new books coming into the studio. So even here, like, I've got, got some with me actually. I got, this is Jost Hockley, who's like an amazing book designer. Um, and I'm having a flick through this at the moment. Um, I just bought this one for myself, which is the Ray Gun Bible of Music and wow. Style. Insane. Which I really mean, cool. the size is definitely insane. Yeah, this is awesome. It's kind of relevant to the work that I'm doing at the moment because the work is a, it's quite raw and, you know, that sort of lovely collage. Yeah. Um, so I bought this recently for myself. And I think, yeah, we've just... We just have a lot of books around that they're displayed everywhere so it's a constant like little source of inspiration and yeah. so that you 
drawn away from the screen and um you know you can't be looking on pinterest for inspiration you need to yeah. go and sit with a uh some pages that are that are designed in a way to kind of captivate a little bit and um i i personally think books are the best thing for that um because you start to think in a different way um than you know scrolling through yeah. the digital space yeah when you say that uh, you know uh, uh, when you s- talked about that that printers thing i mean that's that's like a uh, i think sometimes it becomes like a vicious circle that mm-hmm. uh, you know you you limit yourself uh, towards a, a specific type of a design you know uh, you is from the beginning only you kind of think about the execution uh so so uh, do, do you think big bo- book you know having a set of books or having some kind of a study material definitely helps I think so. Yeah, you sort of make connections in a different way with printed pages. I think or object. I've, yeah, I mean, in your team, do you, you refer a lot of books uh, and uh, like on a, on like a pro- or according to your projects and all? Yeah, I mean, I would like print. I would I would photocopy and 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 print stuff out and and start to work with sometimes the the references. Um, we we're not like huge fans of um going and looking at inspiration online. um we're more kind of in the process of of creating and making ourselves so you know some people are more tactile than others there's a lot of like awesome motion um experimentation that goes on in the motion team from in the early sort of concept stage where you know th- these guys are genius from for from my point of view um so that's like creating stuff original stuff for for yourself and then that will fuel the designers um and then we'll kind of fuel each other so there's there's quite a like nice process of rather than looking at you know a vision board or inspiration boards making your own uh inspiration i guess and inspiring each other um but then you have yeah books to reference um the books are all sort of around the studio and there's a sort of yeah the tactility of them that i think you can't really see on and yeah. um, your your pinterests or whatever although obviously you know and there's some amazing blogs and things out there that is great to keep up with um but i think the team are much more encouraged to generate than look to others yeah yeah that's right and, and uh, yeah that's that's this one's a personal one uh what, what, which one's your favorite part of the process i mean okay okay when this this phase going to come i'm just going to kill it or is just maybe a piece of cake for me what is that that part of the process that you like the most i mean i do love the very very early stage the before you know what it is kind of stage where you, it could be anything and you're it's just kind of the scariest stage at the same time um and also on the other side there's towards the end of a project if you're really feeling that you've achieved that vision you've created at the beginning at that very very early stage then that can be obviously really rewarding um the the thing that i've been up to why why i've been so busy recently is because we've been on lots of photo shoots and i haven't actually done a huge amount of that work in in the past and so just like getting out there and photographing and creating our own images um to use within the work has been like super rewarding so i think that's probably what i've taken most from this project i'm doing now you need to make the images yourself um because when you start to then find you know uh go going through kind of things like getty or you know things like uh image banks that takes away from your own decision and your own sort of vision so even when even like things like case studies when you're photographing work to go in the case study creating creating printing it out and making your own mockups rather than like putting it in a mockup that sort of like the exciting bit as well because you're you know that you're making something that's completely original so yep. yeah the two, the two sides the middle bit's really hard <laughs> yeah and and i i think that's also the part where all the lines are a little blurry uh, yeah. i feel yeah and yeah. Uh, i i again i i think so 
Oh, so for example, there's there's this. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I mean, uh, y- your team has done a project for HBO, if I am not wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when when you are doing that kind of a project, because uh, I I I think this is what I think on the other side is that a lot, a millions and millions of people gonna see that logo, right? Millions and millions of the people gonna gonna see the visuals that you guys uh, uh, are are designing. So you have a lot of weight on your shoulders so yeah. uh, how how do you make sure that you you do you do justice with that or or maybe it's not a big deal i think it is a big deal i think i think everyone feels the weight of it and it's like uh you know the opportunity to create something that's going to be seen in millions of people's homes it comes with you know that trepidation that it has to be perfect or crafted and that, that that's i think that's why we're here we want to make good work so that's not going to be going out the door after a week of logo design this is you know crafted over uh, over time and um yeah it's it is quite a wait i think sometimes but i think you have to sort of forget about the end result and just just focus on creating something that works and something that looks cool <laughs> um because otherwise you get like uh burdened by that weight and that's a distraction um you know that that can be kind of a little de- debilitating i think so yeah try not to take it too, too seriously but tell any designer that and it's a nightmare <laughs> yeah for sure i mean it's it's very easy uh, you know uh, to to say but when when you are on it definitely there's a lot of uh pressure and also to kind of build that trust uh, uh you know uh, to that whatever you want to do is is out there uh, you know i mean you know yeah. so uh, so uh, uh, for for such projects or or your ideal projects uh so what basically in this podcast i i'm asking all the things i don't know about or i feel difficult about so so they are yeah. thanks thanks for that uh so is it like uh, it's uh, so i mean in the beginning uh, do you fo- you do, do you, as a as a team try to follow uh, you know you you try to create a lot of iterations you focus on the quantity more or from the from the initial level you are like okay everything we are making has to be uh, you know top notch the quality should be 100% or you balance like quantity and quality yeah i mean the 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 end result has to be top notch but you can't get there straight away you need to be able to be free from the almost the burden of the the final result to be able to be free and uh explore and be tactile and i think you have to to be kind of um pushing yourself and making a lot um to be able to kind of get to the the core of what a good idea is so we do generate a lot of work um before we kind of find that that magic gem sometimes you get there quite quickly but um other times it takes time so i think as people who are creative we just we like to produce and and then edit um and we get closer and closer to what that vision is um or bringing the vision to life and um yeah the making is the fun part right like we're creative people that want to make stuff so you have to kind of let that be free enough to find something special i guess yeah yeah for sure 100% um i i i think i i i asked this question a lot uh, uh, you know in 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 the, in the podcast about how uh, you know you co- you constantly stay creative what are the things that you do uh, you know or what are the kind of activities on a daily basis you follow which which keeps you constantly creative um walking <laughs> that's a good one um i do a lot of writing actually i i write a lot in the mornings um not necessarily creative writing but to sometimes it's good to kind of write to get into a bit of a flow um but it's it's hard to creativity to be 100% on all the time you you are at points more in flow than others i think you have to forgive yourself at some points for not being there all the time um so 
yeah, I mean, I like I like to make things um, and try and kind of forget uh, about the kind of the the you know the weight of the of what you have to do, <laughs> and and get to some a place that feels a little bit more in flow. It might be like listening to some very loud music, <laughs> or you know, just sort of making something that feels quite lo-fi, um, that feels quite loose. Um, because I think, like, going back to what you just said, your previous question, you know, do you need to make something that feels polished and 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 finished? Obviously, in the end, it will, but nothing becomes that way. Just you don't work like that. It's it's kind of messy, isn't it? The creative process, and you you sometimes lose your way and then go back, and so you, you can't be. We we like to produce and present things in a way that feels like it honors like an idea and honors like um the the challenge but not to be noodling to a point where you're forgetting the freedom um so yeah i guess at different times in the creative process you need to switch on that that um button but to be f to be creatively free at the beginning i think is really important yeah I mean, not a lot of people uh, talk about uh, you know a messy process, uh, to, you know, uh, to to the world. That I think that that's that's one of those things that it's it's. I think it's okay to be messy. I think that's that's what uh, makes the uh, the result more interesting. But again, uh, you have to draw the line of you know where where you wanna stop. So yeah. to so do you think that's the uh, uh, that that's the that's the right way of uh, you know making the most out of a creative process? Yeah, I think so. Like. You're obviously messy within, if you're using a computer, it can't be that messy, can it? Because it's everything's, you're still thinking about um, what the tone of it is, the color, and, you know, you, you're making decisions. Um, but to get, I, I mean, so I, I work with some people that are very, very neat. So maybe I'm just a messy person. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, you have to find the way that works for you. And everyone has their own different way, don't they? Um you know, you can't be copying what uh, an approach that someone else has because really it's your, it's about figuring out what, how you'd like to work best. I work really well in the morning, not very well in the afternoon. You know, I have like quite clear ideas and visions in the morning. And then when it gets to three o'clock, you know, that's probably when I should do something else, like a different task. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah. I mean, and uh, you, you, uh, talked about the the writing part. Uh, I've been I've been in fact a lot. Uh, you know, uh, starting to write myself, and I think it has uh, helped me a lot. Do Do you think more designers should focus on writing? I think you are, as part of being a designer, you're a writer. It's obviously you're not like a a brand writer or a copywriter, but you have to be able to articulate and tell a story, whether it's three words or visually, the combination. Um, so I think designers are often writers as well. Um, they might not be writing the copy lines, but to be able to tell like, you know, a strong narrative with the, the, the strong beats um, that you need to land something, um, then writing is like kind of integral. So, you know, whether it's spelt right or not is a different thing, <laughs> but now you have lots of things to help us with that. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, sounds awesome. So uh, that that uh, takes us to the you know to to the end of the podcast. And um, I, I mean, what are what what are the tips you'd like to give uh, to to the designers or creative directors to you know that that maybe uh, you you thought you 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 realize on the way other other you know key uh, other key to 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 create amazing work. If you have something to talk about <laughs> that. Yeah. No pressure. Um, I don't know, really. Yeah, I I don't know. I was I was thinking about this earlier, which is yes. actually a nice point to say thank you for inviting me on here because I do love the podcast and I love what you're you're doing, you know, visually and that your guests and this and the sound design and everything. So it, it's really cool that you're creating this platform and community, um, and it, it's given me a a kind of nice opportunity to think about those things as well. What is it that makes you tick as a designer what is is it that you love um because you can forget about those things when you're in the process and 
So it's a really cool thing that you're doing. Um, I think, I don't know, uh, for me, trying to find creative confidence is like the the biggest challenge and it's something that goes up in peaks and troughs. And if if you can find that and instill it in others, then I think you're doing something right. Um, because there's like, you know, new generations of incredible designers and they need to be given the space to to thrive in. So yeah, I think that's probably what I would take and my biggest learning. It, it, it's a fickle thing sometimes, confidence, but it helps you to be a better designer, I think, if you can find it. Yeah, I I, I think that, that this is a very cliche question that I ask, but I still ask, you know. So, because uh, I think every time I get different answers, because uh, initially, you know, I wasn't very sure about, you know, asking everyone the same question, but I've realized that I was getting very interesting answers. Uh, and it, on, a, on a personal level, I, I was, uh, you know, I, I, I find them pretty interesting. So, yeah. So, yeah. Th thanks again, Tasha. Thanks again for hopping onto the podcast. Uh, I had uh, so much to pick from our conversation. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for inviting me on. And yeah, look forward to hearing it and, and keep track of what you're up to all the way over there um, from London. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Take care then.